Hi tribe, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ari Herbal and today I'm here to talk about herbs for your sensual self, your sensual spirit. Um, I said sensual because I know some people are uncomfortable with the word sex, I'm not. Um, I think that it is important for us to talk about sex because I think that a lot of people don't even know it, but they have a, a negative thought about sex. They, they think about sex in a taboo, negative way, and um, it causes a lot of issues in the bedroom or in your own life. You don't realize how much low self-esteem affects your sexual life, and sometimes you do, but um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about healthy sexual practices and also um, some herbs, obviously, because I'm airy herbal. I'm gonna talk about some herbs that are also really helpful with sexual dysfunction um, and also aphrodisiacs, which, you know, essentially kind of have the same effect. So my camera does not have um, an SD card, so I'm using my computer. I hope that this is okay. I hope it doesn't look bad. Um, also, I'm in my living room because the light in my office is terrible. So <laughs> I guess we're gonna do this here, but I think it's a good place to do it. You know, it's it's very calming and we can talk about everything that we need to talk about in a nice safe space while Lily just sits here and eventually may bark at someone. So I hope that that doesn't get annoying. So first I wanted to talk about the importance of sexual exploration. Understanding what you like and what you feel like you should like. Um, allowing yourself to feel your body and learn yourself before you can help someone else learn, your, learn yourself, learn you. Um, there, there are going to be times when you're not even sure if, you know, you think you have you, orgasm. You're like, I've never had an orgasm before. And um, for women, it's a little bit harder than for men. For men, you know, you know if you orgasm, you, you know, stuff comes out. <laughs> but um, for women, it's not really, you're not really sure. I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of women and they said they never had an orgasm. And if you can make yourself orgasm, that means it's possible for you to have an orgasm with sex. It's possible. Um, but there are other ways to explore um, sexual relations with someone. And maybe for you, it's not better to have penetration. I mean, obviously penetration would be eventually desired, but... Um, I'll tell you, I guess, a small story. When I was in college, I took abnormal psych, and I had a partner, and we had to do a, like a psychological book report. And we did a book report. I can't remember the book, and I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I still have it. I don't throw away books. Um, but we did one on, um, you know, sex between partners and couples. You know, it was a self-help book about sex between partners and couples. And I think one of the things that people don't realize is that you really need to communicate. It's completely fine to communicate with your partner that you didn't like this or you did like that or, um, you know, learning each other in a safe space without deciding that you're going to blame this person for your bad sexual experience. If you can't talk to that person about your sexual experience and you guys aren't willing to work it out, um, there's just, you know, it's not gonna work in the end. You know, there's gonna be needs that need to be met. And I'm not saying it's okay to cheat because I am the opposite of okay with cheating, like at all, like that's just like, no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is relationships will work and you have to be able to talk to your partner about, you know, your sexual preferences. And also when you have that talk with your partner about your sexual preferences, the sex is like amazing. It's like 10 times a thousand to the moon insane. And so it's very important to have those kind of, that kind of talk. You want to make sure that you guys are connecting on all levels because if they don't know, they can't read your mind unless they're mind readers, which I doubt. So, you know, they can't read your mind. You need to talk to them about it. It goes the same for men, the same for women. But first you have to know what you like, right? You can't tell them what you like unless you know what you like, right? So it's very important to have sexual exploration. Not only that, of course, um, to have a li little bit of a sexual release is very important, at least like once a week, you know? So 
you know, don't feel bad that you have to pleasure yourself because it's good for you. Um, so, um, I like to talk a little bit about chakras also. Um, obviously, uh, the chakra associated with, um, you know, sexual behaviors is uh, the sacral chakra. What's interesting about the sacral chakra is that um, it's the Svasistana chakra. What's interesting about that chakra is that it also rules over creativity and um, kind of spontaneity. You know, um, sometimes it's good to just allow yourself to be sensual with yourself. Um, dancing is a way to be sensual without, you know, overstepping any of your own boundaries. If you aren't comfortable with touching yourself or any of those things, you know, dancing sensually or not sensually, expressing yourself creatively, art, you know, like those kind of things. Even singing, singing is more communication, but also singing can be sexual too. I mean, how many people listen to a singer sing and then automatically just get wet? Like, <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people like that. And so, you know, express your sensuality through, um, to do your creativity if you're not ready for a full sensual you know jump into your sensual self touching yourself making sure that you feel sexy on your own not for anybody else just you feel sexy for yourself and there's nothing wrong with that let's talk about these herbs <laughs> okay so tribulus um tribulus is is been um researched um a few times they seem to think that it increases testosterone. There's a lot of differing evidence about whether or not it actually increases your testosterone, but it has been found to improve sexual desire, um, especially in women. Um, and it also increases fertility in men, so be careful. Um, if you're gonna take tribulus, they found that it may increase sexual fertility, so be careful with that one. Donkai, um, when I was learning everything, um, you know, donkai is one of the Chinese herbs that is really good for, um, you know, just women's health in general, like uh, female health, <coughs> excuse me, just like uh, chasberry and vitex, vitex. Um, but donkai also helps with arousal in women. Um, a lot of these, I'm going to put um, some of my sources in... Um, I don't know, you know, the thing that comes on the YouTube channel. I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna put my sources there just so you know. Um, some of them are really good. Some of them are okay. Um, I did a quick scan. I just wanted to make sure I had things to back me up from the things I say. Um, because these are, these are, I wrote these things down. <coughs> excuse me. I wrote these things down on my own because I already knew that they were helpful in arousal and stuff like that. But I wanted to make sure that if anyone was to question whether or not I knew what I was talking about, I just put the sources on there and they can just look at, look at them themselves. My dog is here trying to be adorable. <laughs> All right, so ginkgo biloba. Yes, everyone knows about ginkgo. Yes, it helps with mental function and um, it helps with circulation, which a lot of people don't know. Um, but also, it's <coughs> what is going on? It's arousing. It, uh, Lily, be careful. <laughs> um, they actually have been testing it. Uh, there's a few studies. <coughs> <laughs> there are a few studies about uh, ginkgo and the way it could affect. Um, I wrote SSRI. Um, um, induced um, sexual dysfunction but um, that really, really says I just wrote because it was quick but um, what it really said was antidepressant induced um, sexual dysfunction the only problem with that I saw the research I saw some things I saw one of the researches I think I put up there says that there was some side effects I'm not sure if those side effects were caused by the um, SSRIs or it was caused by the ginkgo um, that's one of the problems with, with this is that, you know, when you're talking about interaction, drug interactions, specifically SSRIs already have a bunch of side effects. So if people are feeling these side effects, like, I don't know, like weight gain or headaches, <laughs> like, you know, things that are, you know, 
caused by SSRIs, well, you know, you can't you can't put it on the pinko and you don't know if it had a reaction with it. But also, I feel like it, of course, could have a reaction with it. So I would not, if you're having that issue, I wouldn't go with ginkgo because of um, its effect on the brain. It, you know, it opens pathways in the brain and increases blood flow to the brain and throughout the body. But also, you know, because of that, I'm not sure if it would increase the amount of, um, of neurotransmitters or I'm not, not necessarily neurotransmission, but, but you know what I mean. It, it would, I'm not sure if it would increase everything to the brain causing more issues. You don't want more dosages getting to your brain than normal. And you also don't want it going through your system too quickly because um, then, you know, you'll end up overdosing on and causing issues. My dog wants all of my attention. She's upset at me now. Um, but, um, they found that it especially helps with women who are um, having sexual dysfunction caused by the um, antidepressants. Ginseng, red ginseng, or uh, Panax ginseng, Korean ginseng, and there was also like another um, another one. But Donkai also, by the way, is called female ginseng. Look at that, um, because it helps women want to have sex more, it helps increase your libido. Anyway. That's not here nor there. Um, it's just something I remembered. Um, ginseng induces vasodilation um, in the penis. <laughs> so it increases blood flow in the penis, therefore allowing, you know, an increase in, in flow, which is what happens when the penis gets aroused, is, uh, you know, a lot of blood flow there. Ding, it's all up. <laughs> um, and also, it increases uh, libido and satisfaction. Now, I think they were talking about in men, one of the biggest issues I've been having with the, the way that people look into um, sexual dysfunction is that they're only looking at it from a man's standpoint. Like, there aren't like mostly women out there who can't have an orgasm. Like, there's an insane amount of women who can't have orgasms. And we're just pretending like, oh yeah, no problem. No one cares about female erectile dysfunction. Well, <laughs> not female erectile dysfunction, but female sexual dysfunction. And I think it's important to note that, you know, there's so much more information out there on male sexual dysfunction than female. So I'm trying to help as much as I can. But the thing about females is that our orgasms can be induced by our own brain like we can we can make ourselves feel an orgasm if we put ourselves in the correct place um, mentally um, one of the things in the book uh, from a while ago that I was telling you about from my college days which was a long time ago <laughs> but not that long ago um, was saying that with couples they typically um, you know, just go for the same old boring thing and they don't try new things. And the woman doesn't realize that um, she's not into it. You know, she doesn't know that, you know, there's more stuff to, there, there, there's actually um, a chapter on sex without penetration. So, you know, cuddling, right? Because women might need more of an emotional connection depending on who you are. Um, you, you could need a more emotional connection. So you know, you could do a form of cuddling and not necessarily grouping, I want to say grouping, but it's kind of like that, um, and touching or just, you know, obviously clitoral stimulation, obviously you could do that. I mean, um, but then there's like other parts of your body that you could, you know, you could use. Obviously you could touch different places, essentially find your partner spots, try and you know, get them going and then get them aroused. And then they, I mean, women can have orgasms any kind of way, but so it's kind of ridiculous that women can't have orgasms other than the fact that no one knows how to do it. Um, back to the herbs. <laughs> um, Mondra Whitey, it said Mondia Whitey. I always thought it was Mondra Whitey. Um, it's an African herb. Um, it's in my, um, African herbalism webinar. Um, we talked about it a little bit, but it's great for erectile dysfunction. It's just like a little white flower. Um, 
but there's not really much on it other than the fact that it's great for erectile dysfunction. Don't, um, I'm not gonna lie, I am kind of annoyed at the evidence when I was looking up Demiana because I know that that's good for female um, sexual dysfunction. It's supposed to help arouse females and males, but no one was really looking into it. And also, when it came to looking for women health resources, um, they always put all of them all, they, they don't focus on one. They're not putting a lot of time into it. They're just like, okay, all of these things help women, but we're not gonna be like really focused on it. It's like, oh, women can get help with these things, I guess a little bit. And then they just show like a small amount. You'll see it. If you look at my sources, you'll see them. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of research out there for drugs, but not for herbs. You know, you know they feel like they can make more money off men. I guess, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, last but not least on my list, now these are not all the herbs that can help, but this is just a small amount that just came off the top of my head and I just felt like, okay, well, I'll just put a few down and so that people know that there are herbs out there to help them with any possible problem that they might be having um, sexually. Um, Yohimbe, I don't know if anyone else has ever heard of Yohimbe and I'm sure you have because I have before all of my like, African herbal studies. I had heard of it, but I didn't know much about it. It's an African um, plant. Oh, I think it comes from a tree. And um, this is one of those plants that causes pe <laughs> penile vasodil <laughs> vasodilation. I am so tired. It causes penile vasodilation, and also it's helpful with um, antidepressant induced um, erectile dysfunction. Um, it was found to help with those things. But also when I was looking it up, it also said that it was an aphrodisiac and it also helped with, um, you know, increasing the libido. Um, a lot of these, um, the, the studies don't actually talk about that much about the arousal. They just look for the biological mechanisms for what happens, which I typically like because I wanna understand how it's gonna affect the person I'm giving the herbs to. Um, I would rather know that part and then look at the person and see um, are they having an issue here or where are they having this issue then I know this thing targets that specific issue so for me it's more important um, for you to heal yourself um, through biological mechanisms but it's very important to acknowledge that there is a psychological component to um, sexual dysfunction and sexual, you know, practices. You need to be in the right mindset to be sexual with yourself or with others. You have to be in the right mindset um, to experience something magical um, with someone else. Um, some things that you should probably look into um, if you are having problems having sex with your significant other is uh, tantric sex, um, well, ta tantric sexual practices. Um, there's a few people who can help you with like having amazing orgasms with your partner. And I can tell you right now, it definitely starts with communicating and unity because tantra, uh, tantra is kind of part of yoga and um, the idea of unity is all through yoga, you know, unity with self and higher self and um, you know, I can't imagine tantric um, tantric practices don't involve being one with yourself, knowing your own energy and your own Kundalini energy, and then um, you know using that um, to connect with someone else and become one with them through the practice of sex. Um, and then it's also okay to be adventurous if you don't want to. You know, if you're tired of the same old thing, it's okay to be adventurous. Make sure you talk to your partner or, you know, don't just like go into having sex and then just be like, all right, we're trying this now. Like, that's not cool. No one wants that. Like, talk to people about what you want. Allow yourself to be what you want. And if they're not into it, it's time for you to just figure out how to do it on yourself. <laughs> um, I hope that this was helpful. I I know I did a lot of rambling and um, I know that it wasn't 100% organized, but um, I do 
personally love talking about sex and how to help people have better sex. I personally don't have issues with sex, um, but I think that's because growing up, I've always had um, positive influences. No one has ever told me that sex was a bad thing. They always told me it was great, just do it with the right person. I've never been taught um, anything, you know, negative about sex. Um, and so I never felt like when I did it, I never felt like I did something bad or something was wrong or anything like that. I enjoyed my first time and then I, you know, continued to enjoy it for the rest of my life. Um, and I feel like I have a healthy sexual appetite. So I think it's important for people to recognize that when you want sex, if you're a woman and you want sex, that's fine. Like you love sex, you want to have sex all the time. That's that's fine. That's that's your body telling you I'm ready for this. And if you feel like you just don't feel like you want to have sex, or you just really don't like it, um, I encourage you to um, explore yourself, but also um, don't beat yourself up for feeling like you don't want to do it. It doesn't make you any less of a woman or any less of a person to not um, want to have sex with someone else. It just, you know, it's important for you to release that part of your body and experience um, that higher self that comes from an orgasm. <laughs> um, and also, women, I almost forgot, um, make sure you do your Kegels. I'm just reminding you right now, do some Kegels. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the Yanni balls, but you put that in there and you can induce your own orgasm through a Yanni ball while doing Kegels with the Yanni ball. Also strengthening your uterus, which is, well, not your uterus, your vagina, which is pretty awesome. So make sure you do your Kegels, um, be healthy. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on my page and I hope that I didn't talk your ear off and I hope that you like my video. Bye.